So a lot of you may know that Roblox's servers aren't particularly great if it comes to performance, and programming certain tasks can be difficult for seamless gameplay elements. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, and let's get into the video. I know that a lot of people play different games like FPSs on Roblox, like Phantom Forces or even games like MM2, where there would be a scenario when you went around the corner and on your screen you would be hidden, but you actually would be hit from the person that was standing for example right here. And I kind of want to present why that happens, to give you some insight and tell you how you can make it a little bit better. But overall it happens because of something called a server delay. And it includes a lot of different stuff like networking ping and some other factors that I'm gonna talk about later. But for now since you can really see this I'm going to actually make a visualizer by adding a script into the server script service. And I'm just going to name this one visualize delay. And what this script is going to do, it's basically just going to make a part that's going to follow the player's position and it's going to be operated by the server. So I'm just going to move it right here and first I'm just going to get the player service. And now I want to make the part whenever the player's character loads into the game. So I need to do player service that player added, then connect a function that's holding the player and then it doesn't return anything. And then from here I can do another event, which is going to be the player that character appearance loaded. And then just connect another function. And this one is going to hold the character, which is a model. And we simply just create the part by doing a local part is going to be equal to instance.new and then a part. And then I can set the parent to be the workspace. Then I can make it encode as well as disable its collision. And now this part is going to have the same position and size as the player's humanoid root part. So I need to do local humanoid root part is equal to the character find fish child and then humanoid root part. And then if for some reason the player doesn't have the humanoid root part, I can do if not hrp, then return end. Then right here I can set the parts that size to be the humanoid root part that size, as well as the part that C frame to be the humanoid root parts C frame. So right now if I just do a playtest, it's only going to create the part after I join, but we somehow need to make it follow the player. And we can do that with another service, which is called run service, which is equal to game get service and then run service. And then right here after the player joins, I can connect another function that's going to react to maybe the heartbeat event. And then this function holds the delta time. And I basically only need to copy the design of code right here. So now if I do a playtest and then just walk, the part is going to follow our character. And although I'm changing the position of this part to be the same as my humanoid root part, you can see that this part is kind of staying behind. And that's what the server delay is about. Since what I'm seeing on my screen is kind of different from what the server is receiving, because the information needs to be streamed from my Roblox client to the server. And the delay that you see is basically just caused by the time it takes for the server to receive information from my client. So even if there was a wall right here, for example, if I just went behind it like this, there was a certain time where my character was behind the wall, but the part that's following the player wasn't. So what I'm seeing on the client is always going to be different from what the server is registering, because the data and my client information needs to take some time to be streamed onto the server. And right now the server is hosted locally because I'm in Roblox Studio, but if I was for example in a server that would be like really far away from me, the distance from me and this part would be even bigger. And now if I just go to the server view, and try to move my character, you can see that the part is instantly following the player. It's not staying behind and that's because the movement of the player right now is also operated by the server. Even if I move the player really fast, you can see that the part is basically just sticking to him. Because the script that I made is basically just assigning the position of the part to the player every frame. And to present this example even more, I'm going to do a local server with two players. And I'm just going to move this client onto my second monitor. And right now this is going to be the server view. So if I move with one of the players, you can see that the part is basically following him as it should. But if I move with this character, for example, on my screen the part is a little bit behind me, but you can see that on the server is staying right on my character. And right now if I try to move this player on the server, since the movement is again going to be the server operation, you can see again that the part is staying right on him. But this is just a part for now, right? And I can take this example even a little bit further, where instead of just making one part, I'm going to make the whole character, because there is also different stuff like the replication of the animation, well that rhymed, where the animations are immediately replicated because of the animator instance. But I'm basically just going to add a table, which is just going to be called display parts, where instead of just making one part, I'm just going to add a for loop, 
where I'm going to loop through all of the children from the player's character. Then I want to do if body part is a base part, then I basically just want to clone it and put it into the table. So the display is just going to be the body part and then clone. And I'm also going to make a folder inside of the player's character for all of the body parts. And also it's going to clone the part with all of the attachments and everything else. So I want to use the clear all children method. So it's just not going to break my character. Then at the end I want to disable that insert into the display parts and I want to insert the body part. And here I'm just going to change different properties, like the color for example, then just make it like green. Then the transparency, disable the collision and then set the parent. And lastly I want to make it anchored. And now I just want to look through this table. So again it's just going to be for index body part and instead of get children I'm just going to put the table and then do. Then I just want to do body part at C frame is equal to the character find fish child then body part that name followed by C frame. And if I do a playtest with this script it's well going to break my character. And that's probably because I forgot to exclude the humanoid root part. So I also want to do if body part that name is different than the humanoid root part. Actually scratch that I'm really dumb. This was supposed to be the display not the body part. But anyways. So now I'm going to have the green character basically just following me and you can see that the animation is replicating but it's still staying a little bit behind my own character. So you can see that there is basically like a half a second delay between what I see and what the server sees. But again the server is going to see it perfectly fine. Even again on the playtest with a local server. And sadly there isn't really a way to fix something like this. This would only be possible if Roblox changed their servers and networking. But the game delay basically just happens in every single game where you need an online connection for the multiplayer. But I also wanted to mention a little bit more about the seamless gameplay for the player. So it mostly just comes down to different tasks being performed by the server and the client. Like the less tasks the server performs of course is going to be easier for the server to manage different things because it's basically just going to use less computing power. So even simple stuff like a door where it has a normal server script that basically just reacts on the untouched event and opens and closes the door and all the script does is basically just change the attribute of the door where this door opens script which is a script with a client run context. This is what's actually playing the twin and opening the door. It listens to the attribute change signal and then basically just closes or opens the door depending on the attribute. And we don't need to do this twin on the server because even creating and playing the twin just takes the resources from the server to firstly open the door and then stream everything to all of the clients. So playing the twin again can be a task that's performed on the client. And also since the touched event is registered on the server, if I just go to this door model and the touch part, you can see that it's only going to fire whenever the green body parts are going to touch this part. And that's because the server is going to register my character's position that's currently being streamed to it. So again for a different presentation, I'm just going to walk into this door. And you probably just saw that the event fired not when I walked into the door, but when the server received that I was actually in this position. And there is also a few different stuff like for example if you were making a fighting game and you had an option to either make a server-sided or client-sided hitboxes, and what you see and what the server receives is going to be a little bit different in time. So if there was for example a different player in front of me and I wanted to hit them, and if I was walking in this direction let's say, and on my screen I would be attacking from this square right here, but on the server I would be probably in this position. So if it was a server-sided hitbox, I would probably not be in range to hit the other character. But if it was done on the client, I would just hit them on my screen and the server could validate the hit. And that's why in my opinion it's better to make client-sided hitboxes. And also going back to the previous point about the seamless gameplay, if you are playing a fighting game or a game like MM2, you probably experience something called reach, where the murderer could be for example like a far away distance from you, but you would get hit by them from really far away. And that usually just happens with players with bad connection or just on like a laggy device. Since you have to also take a note that I am on PC right now, where I'm going to have a better transfer and receive rate than for example a mobile player that has an old phone, which also has like an old networking card, where they could also be limited by many factors like the Wi-Fi range or the usage by different people and traffic and there isn't much stuff to do in that regard except different validations performed on the server. 
And that's also one of many reasons why it could be really hard to, for example, make a fighting game on Roblox. And I don't mean like a battleground game, but something like Guilty Gear, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat and so on. Because the transfer of data in these games needs to be really on point. Since you have moves that, for example, take few frames, and waiting like half a second for the move to be streamed is really annoying and basically just defeats the whole purpose of mechanics, precision and different stuff that you see in these types of games. But overall Roblox isn't really a platform that was strictly designed for that. Since it's like a place to basically just host a lot of people to be together in one world or even place, and I'm guessing that keeping up financially would be a really big hassle for a platform of this size. But yeah, I'm going to stop with talking for now, and that's basically going to be everything for today. So again, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, also go check out my UGC items, but I hope everyone had a nice day and see ya guys.